All right, here we are again, working on the Olaf 150. Haven't had any problems with it in a while. Now, this is the only problem that came up, and this is new pads. Well, not new pads, they're probably three years old, but maybe 3,000 miles. You hear it? I think my caliper is bad, and I think the pad is bad too, but I got new calipers. Um, not calipers, rotors and pads. I'm going to see how it does and then change out the caliper if I need to. But the truck still runs, I mean, extremely well. So I'll be back when I take this thing off. Oh, right, well, one thing is make sure you got your stuff on jack stand safe, sturdy. Shake the vehicle if you have to before you... Um, take the wheel off and then I still put the wheel under it just in case it drops it um holds it up I'll be back then all right take off the wheel if you need to learn how to take off a wheel then I'd suggest don't even try doing this um you take off the cap under there is the bolt to get this off but before that you'll be taking off the caliper just like you're doing a uh, brake exchange on the old Ford you squeeze this and this in to release everything um, it I did get um new bearings also I'm just gonna swap out everything ceramic brakes and two uh, rotors with the bearings uh, but Truck has a light surface rust, none to cry about. You know, after 28 years, it should have that. No rust on the body whatsoever. But living down south, you don't get the rust. All right, well, I start taking this stuff off. All right, what I did, straighten out the carter pin so that it can get pulled out right here. And just squeeze the two pieces that were there these right here and they come out fairly easy so all I have to do is squeeze it or I can take a bigger screwdriver and push it there and push it out the back and then I can start taking off everything that's all it takes and what I do first after I Get the caliper off, tie it up. Realize this one here, the pad fell off. The back is still good, but I don't ever um, have them shaved down. I spin this and feel that because that's how I want to put it back. This bearing is good. Shake it. There's no play in the bearing whatsoever. So when I put it back on, that's how I want it. About the same um, tightness to what it is right now. So I'll go ahead. All that's left is just take off this one bolt and everything comes off. That's it. Then I'll clean it up to have it go on, you know, a lot smoother. Put some grease on all the metal to metal pieces. That's about it. All right. Once you take off the nut... You can just pull it out. There's a big washer. And that's the bearing. Bearing is actually very, very good condition. Um, shaft is in really good condition. I always use a, um, a high temp um, bearing grease and put it back on. I have guys use all kinds of grease and they still work. But I just use the, the bearing grease, a high temp. The back side of the rotor, that's it. Pretty nice. The front side is where we got the problem. And it was the... Let's see if I can get it. Yeah. But the pad probably fell off. Because on the other side, 
it's on the back side of this one here. That's it. And on the other wheel, it's front and back is similar to that one right there. I don't know. This one here just had a bad day. And then I got these at one of the auto parts place that has the lifetime warranty. But I wouldn't even bother go with it because it was just a regular metal brakes or pads. So I'll put on ceramics this time. Now let me clean this up and get ready to start putting it back together. Okay, this is the new one. It came with protecting this was this. And that was on top. Just like that. Took it off. There's the identical stock. Ones this truck doesn't make any more power than stock. So there's a nice cross hatch on it. Uh, they said it came with bearings, but I don't see the bearings. Nope, I might have to go back down the road and get bearings. But what I do anyways clean this off with brake cleaner to get that oil off of them and then put it back on greased up with is that grease oh I'll get that grease in a bit all right, all right finally got back here this bearing in here is this one right here a 13 Let's see if I can do it better. Yeah. Then the um, seal. Got new ones. That one is this one here. 4148. And then the outer bearing is the set 12. To pack the grease on it real good. I got my oil so I can just put a little oil on it and knock this in. I usually put the oil on this piece here and then just knock it in. But the weather wasn't cooperating with me, so that's why I'm here still. And I'll be done with this thing in like five minutes. All right, all right. This is the grease I use, the high temp grease. Just have to read. Through this here and it'll say um for wheel bearings stuff like that i packed it packed it in there real good now i just have to put on the washer and the nut and the new cotter pins that's it all right wipe everything up real good this is not a <clears throat> regular washer as you can see because on this right here, you have two flat sides and it goes on. It doesn't spin. And the nut goes on either way. And then you have the uh, little castle cap sits on top. So you can push the carter pin through the hole up on top. Now, I have a set here. I know people that use the old one this is the old one here i don't so i just take it and match it up to something that's the same a bad one maybe a little more meat than that one okay that's the one there and That'll be it. And then just don't forget to check the that it's not tight. Right now, the row's nice. That's how I want to keep it, just like that. So that'll be it. And then I'll spray this down again, make sure there's no grease on it. And the back side, get it from here, spin it, and clean it up. Put everything back together. Okay. I got the nut back on with the washer, then the nut. Then I go on and I pull as hard as I can back and forth to see if there's any play. 
and then spin it. You want to smooth turn and then I can put on that castle ring on it, lock it down in place. And then brakes is just usually just put the brakes in. Uh, this is the number of the, oh man, that's the rotor right there. And that's the um, pads number. These were supposed to be the bearing and stuff number, I believe, but didn't come with it. And I have more to come with this old truck because I have parts to swap out on it. It runs good, but I'm going to be changing out water pump and stuff like that on it since the everything on it is 28 years old, including the clutch. My pressure plate said lobby getting changed out. I just remember that, so I just came back on. But everything is back to get on it. Uh, this is the other side, the driver's side, left side. Um, go ahead. This one here is good, but now the pad is almost gone on this one here. But it's not gone yet, but I'll just be throwing it out. Keep them the same always. And just surface rust on it. There's no body rust on on this truck whatsoever. I still have to change these out. And that's stuff that I have. And I was just planning on doing a whole lot of changes this uh, summer. Including putting grease in the fittings. Greasing all those grease fittings. Um, the only thing that was changed out on this truck was the alternator and the fuel pumps. Uh, I changed out that distributor. Didn't need to and I should have kept the old one. I thought that was my problem when the truck was acting up. It ended up being the knock sensor way down there and I couldn't even find a new, new one at the time. I got a used one, it worked. But everything else is what the truck oh yeah and this i changed out this is neat because i thought the truck wasn't holding vacuum well but i'll go ahead and take out the other one and all i did I took off the caliper hung it up right there keep the stress off the um the hoses um to take these out it's really not hard at all I just can't show it because I, I'm only here by myself. But take this with these needle nose and just squeeze the end right here and push it in. Once it gets in, you can take anything here and knock it out. These are just a quarter inch extension or three eighths. Or if you have it, a punch. And that works. So if you have the punch, you go with the punch. But if you don't have a punch, use what you got. You just have to hold it up against the edge and just tap it with a, a light hammer. I'm using that, the rubber end. I'm not even using the, the metal end. And it's going in with these. Once you get that off, you um you test your... Thing. To me, this one is a little bit tighter than I would like it, but I'm going to see. It might just be the bearings are more worn than the other side. You squeeze the little um, pin there, Carter pin, pull it out, and then you can pull that little castle piece off and then just get ready to turn this, and that's it. It's off. These older trucks, it wasn't much to get the things off. And you put it back on, you don't need a press or anything. All right, all right. <clears throat> got the brakes on. Put on that um, brake stop squeak. I think or something. It's a red um, thing you put on to keep the brakes from squeaking. Put on my anti seize. Wiped up the, um, the rotor already. Is rolling free. I packed the cap with grease so when it heats up, it just runs down in there. 
I have to do now is just take this off. That's the, the wire I had holding up the caliper. Make sure your heat shield isn't touching. Because sometimes you get there and you bend something. But when you spin it, you'll hear it. Spin it before you um, move on. Make sure everything is there. These are in. Make sure you put on that carter pin so the wheel doesn't fall off. And then you can go ahead and close everything up. All I have to do is put on the wheel, take it for a test drive if I want to. And just double check on your fluids. All right, before you drive off, sit down, pump the brakes a few times. This one here wasn't um, real light when I pushed it the first time or the second time. Uh, some vehicles, it'll just hit the floor all the, all the way. Um, probably after the second or third, that means you got um, fluid back inside the caliper. And this one here was pretty good. I uh, took it for a test drive, run real nice, no more noise. I actually feel like it, it, it's not holding back. It, it just roll, which is good. So that's it for the old truck. And I have more to come on this old truck here because I just want to get rid of some of the stuff, the parts in them that's been 28 years old on it. So I'll be swapping out parts. But thanks for watching.